Hi, my name is Matt Hatel Masri. Today I'm going to talk about the built in authentication capability with ASP.NET Core 8.0 Minable Web API. The source code for the demo that I'm going to go through is given at the bottom of this slide. I'm going to create a Web API application with the following command .NET new Web API and the output directory is going to be minimal web API. By the way, as of .NET 8.0, when you create a web API, unlike previously, it would have created for you a controller based web API. Now the default web API is the minimal web API. If you want to do the controller based web API, you have to enter the switch minus controllers. So we're going to proceed with the minimal web API. I'll change into that directory. And now if you run this with .NET watch, you will see that it's going to show us a default swagger page. And of course, this one has no authentication at all. I could click on get, try it out, execute, and I'll see the data because there is no authentication. Let's add authentication. Now to add authentication, let me stop this app here and I will need a couple of packages. These are the packages that I need. Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity Entity Framework Core. The second one is used for SQLite. The rest are really used for Entity Framework. So I will take these commands and drop them in my terminal window and let it install. Next, I will have a look at the code by opening the folder in VS Code. All we have are program.cs and of course the app settings file. So let's open up program.cs and over here is the code for the weather forecast endpoint. And there is no authentication. We want to implement database authentication. So I will create a folder here and I'll call it data. And in that data folder, I want to add a C -sharp class for the database context, which I will call the application DB context. And in this file, I will add the standard application DB context code. So let me do this. I'll put a semicolon there. And here we are. This is just the standard code. I will resolve these namespaces. And now it seems to be looking good. I'm done with this. I'm gonna close this file. The next thing is, I'll go into my app settings file and add a connection string for SQLite. Of course, you can use any database, but I'm using SQLite just to keep it simple. So this is the connection string for SQLite. I'm done with this, so I'll close it. The next thing is adding some code to program.cs to associate the connection string with the database context class. I'm gonna paste in here this code, which looks like this. This is where the connection string is being read. This is where we're creating an association between the database context class and the connection string, specifying that we're using SQLite. So let me resolve these namespaces so that we don't have any errors. Since I am using authentication here, I need to add some authentication services. This is one service that I want to add, authorization. And the other one is add identity API endpoints. This is another service I need. And that is based on identity user and it's using the application DB context. We need to add some other code right after use HTTPS redirection. And this is the code we need because we're going to be using authentication and authorization. And it has to be in this specific order, in this specific place. The next step is where we are actually enforcing authentication to a specific endpoint. So at, the, at this endpoint, at the bottom, we're going to add this piece of code to say, yes, we want authentication to be enforced for this endpoint. Finally, we're going to implement API mapping for the identity user. And that code goes right before app run. And this is what it looks like. What's left now 
is for us to do migrations because I'll go back to the application DB context. I may not have mentioned this before, but this inherits from identity DB context identity user, which means it has brought in the schema of the identity framework for users and passwords and all that. So when I do a database migration, it's going to detect all these entities that are required to support identity framework in the database. Let's do that. I'm going to go into the terminal window and do a .NET EF migrations add and the name of the migration, I'll just call it M1 and let the output directory be data slash migrations. Now that it's done, let's go and have a look if it created any migrations. So under the data folder, you will see that it created the migrations files. The next step is to update the database and this literally creates the artifacts in the database. So I'm going to go .NET EF database update. As you can see here, there are a series of SQL statements that have been executed. And since they've been executed without any errors, it is safe to say that it was successful. Now that we have our database set up, let's check out the app by going to .NET Watch. We now have endpoints for register, login, refresh, confirm email and all that. This was pretty much generated because of this line of code. When you put this line of code, it actually creates these endpoints for the identity user. Let's click on get and try this out. And what we get is the 401, which means unauthorized. So we can't really get to this endpoint unless we authenticate. And here we're talking about token authentication. So we need to register. Let's register a user. I'm going to click on register and it's telling us that you have to enter the email and password in this format. So let's try it out. I'm going to enter for email a at a dot a for the password p at dollar dollar w o r d. And let me click on execute. When I click on execute, it comes back with a code 200, which means it created the user. Now let me log in. So I'll click on login. Let me click on try it out. Beside use cookies, I'm going to say true. So it will save the token as a cookie. And for email and password, I'm going to enter the same credentials that I did before, which was essentially email. And that was a at a dot a and password p at dollar dollar w zero rd. Let's execute and see what happens. When I execute, it comes back with 200, which means successful. Now, let me go back to the endpoint here and try it. Let me click on execute and you can see that the data has come through. This is because we used token authentication. Let's do something similar using Postman. So I'm going to start Postman. And now that Postman is up, I'm just going to copy this URL here ending with the port number. So I'm going to make a GET request to localhost 5114. Make this bigger and weather forecast. Let me click on send. You'll see here it came back with a 401 unauthorized. This means that you have to authenticate. So I'm going to log in first. So I'm going to copy this URL add a new tab and change this to slash login using the post method because when you log in, you have to use the post method. And I will send the credentials as row JSON. For the credentials, maybe I can just copy it from down here. When I did log in, this is what I used. So let me just copy this and put it into Postman and click on send. When I click on send, I get in return the token. I'll come here and copy this token from here to there. Copy it. Go back into the get method. And in the get method, I'm going to 
add this authorization bearer token. So I'm going to choose here bearer token, delete what was there before, and then paste what I have here and click on send. When I click on send, indeed, it gets me the data. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give it the thumbs up. Until I see you again in the next video, take care.